Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Trade Talks. My name is Chris Dearman from Nasdaq's Market Intelligence Desk, filling in for the Global Markets Reporter, Jill Malandrino, who is on assignment in Chicago today. And joining me today is my colleague in crime, Brian Joyce, from the Nasdaq's Market Intelligence Desk. We're going to do a week in review here and get a couple of ideas of what's going on with the markets past and what we're looking for coming up into this week. So, Brian, thank you so much for joining me on this today. What have you thank been you. seeing in the markets the last couple of days? Um, we've seen a lot of volatility the last couple of days. Um, the other day we had, um, you know, opened lower on Wednesday, then finished up about half a percent off the lows. Then yesterday we opened higher, then finished almost a half, half a percent off of the highs. So um, there has been some very, you know, choppy kind of price action. Um, there's a lot of headlines out there about um, talks overseas between um, junior economists or junior economic representatives from China and the U.S. that initially caused um, a rebound in the markets and then quickly just yesterday um, the Shanghai index you know um, uh, sold off to uh, a new low actually that happened today when we came in so um, some volatility there I was expecting to see some you know upside follow-through to that news today with um, in Shanghai and that wasn't the case so certainly that's something bears worth watching because the, um, the Shanghai composite is now down more than 25 percent from its January highs. Well, there's absolutely no shortage of political headlines coming through that are really on the macro front affecting this market. Look at what's going on with Turkey with the lira right now and how that contagion could possibly spread. There's been fears of that going through here with the lira against the dollar. And then you're also looking at the issues coming out of China. Now, whether or not they come back to the table or not to talk, which gives the expectation that they might, kind of give the markets a little bit of a boost today. But there's also no shortage of stock-specific headlines coming out this week, whether it's in the tech space or in the retail space. How do you think that's affecting the market so far? Um, well, certainly a positive to see, you know, you know, many companies out there still showing strong earnings, strong growth. Uh, on average, we're seeing about 25% earnings growth, 10% growth in sales. So very good corporate data coming through in Q2 earnings. On the downsides, the negative takeaway is, you know, say in the semiconductor space, which has been one of the generals, the leaders of this market the last two years, the SOX index has gained about 35 to 38% in each of the last two years. It's still up this year as well, but we did see um, some um, downward revision, so downward guidance from a couple of big names in that space. So that's definitely something that bears worth watching from a technical perspective when you look at the SOX index. Um, it's kind of been topping out here over the last six to eight months or so um, in what looks like toppy price action. And if you look at it from a longer term perspective, a secular perspective, the SOX index is just this year getting back to the highs it made in March of 2000, whereas the NASDAQ composite broke out to those new highs in 2015 and really more so in early 16. The SOX index um, is just getting there in 2018. So there's some technical resistance there that it's still fighting through. Um, we'll have to you know, wait to see whether or not it can hold the support, which would be the 2018 lows. It is still a fair amount above that right now, but it was something that we'll have to wait, um, wait out and see how that plays out as we go through August and September, which tend to be seasonally, um, can tend to be um, one of your weaker months throughout the year. Well, that kind of plays into a couple of other items, right? So you're looking at a number of the different indexes out there across the board. I'm noticing that the small cap and the mid cap indexes are continuing to make higher highs. Uh, the S&P 600 small cap index made another 52 week high this week, while the 400, the mid cap, made another high last week. And the Russell's still trading, the Russell 2000 is still trading right near all time highs. And NASA Composite is obviously one of the larger beneficiaries of that. But if you look at the Dow and the S&P, you know, they're trading, they haven't made a new high in weeks, and there's a lot of headlines in that space. Do you think that the information that we're seeing here with the SOX index rolling over and the smaller caps coming over, do you think that those small cap names are catching up to the large cap names where it was a little too far too fast for the bigger cap names, the FANG stocks and the others? Or do you think it's really a rolling over of people taking profits and lighter volumes and the small cap names is pushing hard because there's no sell side or no supply for the demand that we're seeing? Uh, I think really it, it largely is a function of what happened early this year with the, um, the tax changes mm -hmm. um, and the stimulus. You know, the average small cap, mid cap company has a lower or previously had a higher tax rate than what your typical large cap company would have. So the, um, the change in the tax code um, was a um, relatively greater benefit to those small cap names. Um, the dollar has also been strengthening since the April, March, April lows, um, and that certainly is a big story. It generally tends to benefit small caps. You saw when the dollar kind of peaked and topped out in June, the Russell 
um, topped out as well. The Russell 2000 small cap index. Um, so um, the dollar is now kind of moving to new highs again this week. Um, as you noted, the S&P small cap index is making new highs as well. The Russell is just about there also. And the micro cap index, let's not leave them out. They did very well also. They were the leader in, in May and June as the top monthly performers in that month. So absolutely, the small cap names are relatively performing um, uh, or relatively outperforming the larger ones. All right, so going back to what we said before about earnings, and earnings season has for the most part wound down with the exception of a couple of tech names and a fair amount of retail names coming forward. You've seen almost 85% of the S&P 500 report so far. And with that, you've seen almost a beat of 5.5% for all sectors with the exception of energy, which has been the laggard due to, we think, lower oil prices. What is your take on oil right now? Uh, oil is very interesting. It had a phenomenal move off of the lows of last year. I think it bottomed in June of 17 around the 43 level um, and it rallied up to about 75 earlier this year. About a month or so ago, it peaked out. Um, usually when you see large moves like that, just from a pure technical perspective, you um, should expect some, um, some uh, consolidation price action. But however, in saying that, it is worth noting what's going on overseas. So in the U.S., we are seeing accelerating economic activity. Overseas, that is not the case. And as we noted, China, the Shanghai Composite is down 25 percent. That's reflecting slowing global growth. And maybe that has to do with the appreciating dollar. We also have diverging central bank policies where the central bank of the United States, the Fed, they're, they're raising rates. We have quantitative tightening right now. Um, although the Bank of England did have one token rate rise so far um, this year, it's really been the only global bank that is doing what the United States is doing. So what that's causing is a problem for a lot of these overseas economies that have a lot of debt denominated in U.S. dollars, which really had been building up since the lows of the financial crisis. And now that the dollar is really starting to appreciate, we're seeing um, that way on those emerging market economies. Um, over the last two years, in 16 and 17, the dollar had a reprieve where it was weakening versus emerging market currencies, and the emerging markets did well, particularly in 2017. That has reversed back to the downside as far as the performance of the, let's say, the J.P. Morgan Emerging Market uh, Currency Index, mm -hmm. down about 41 percent since its 2011 highs. Um, but just this year, again, has taken a new downtrend. And, as, uh, and accordingly, we're seeing emerging market stocks, emerging market economies also trading lower as well. So very high correlation there. So that brings us into another good topic, which is coming up the items for next week, and one of which is Jackson Hole. So it's going to be Fed Chairman Powell's first Jackson Hole experience. I think it's the 42nd time that the Kansas City Fed hosted it this year. What do you think is going to be coming out of that? Well, it will be very interesting because, as you know, it is Powell's first, um, first time at Jackson Hole. It will be interesting to see how he uses that platform. Um, you know, that people view the Fed right now to be um, hawkishly raising rates. Uh, the base expectation is for one more rate hike this year, but now for a fourth hike, rate hike, the probability is up to about 62%. Um, as we noted, the concerns in overseas markets, um, that to me is what I'm looking out for to see if that has any impact uh, on Powell and maybe him wavering a little bit or blinking um, as far as going through with a fourth rate hike. Um, so we'll have to see if there's any comments about that. Um, they did release a uh, statement yesterday saying that the title of his speech will be um, um, re in regards to the changing economy. So I'm curious to see what that means. Is he referring to just the local U.S. economy or is it the global economy? If it's, if it's focused most on the global economy, I then wonder if they um, drop a few hints that maybe they'll be um, slowing the pace of rates going forward, given what we're seeing in the global economy and it's slowing down. Excellent. So and, and looking at forward for next week, we've got a fair amount of earnings, like we said before, coming out. And you've got on the economic calendar, you've got uh, new and existing home sales as well as durable goods. And on the economic, on the earnings front, you've got companies like uh, SD Lauder, Kohl's, Target, uh, Ross Stores, Gap Stores, Foot Locker, L Brands, Intuit, and Hewlett Packard, say a few. So, so plenty of one-off items there to move the markets and a couple economic items as well. Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Chris Dearborn from Nasdaq's Market Intelligence Desk for Trade Talks.